Patum Tani in Thailand. He's the uh, actually the uh, director of IBMA in China. So we have to sip sip eyes, uh, do something like that. And, uh, and so that we will be favored, highly favored by those in high places. But sometimes those in high places are actually our enemies, not uh, <laughs> the people that are for us. But uh, kidding aside, he is, he's been uh, used by the Lord greatly over there in Thailand. Uh, results are becoming more evident by the day. So I would like to uh, introduce our speaker and thank him for gracing our uh, uh, service today. Pastor Ronald Goodlay. Salamat po, salamat po at magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Pastor, and good, good morning, everybody. Don't worry, I, I don't preach long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, usually, I only preach 20 minutes. <laughs> plus one. <laughs> no, 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 it's a, a great blessing. You know, it's the, the diver dive deep in the ocean so they could get the uh, precious pearl you know? so if you dig deeper to the word of God you know you would get precious um, things from God's word amen and uh, what well, that's what we've learned a while ago amen and uh, so uh, we praise the Lord and uh, but when you're invited to Thailand it's hard for you to preach that long because there's translation so uh, <laughs> But it's three hours, <laughs> and uh, uh, Doctor Joel a while ago mentioned about. Uh, 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 don't forget the name of his son-in-law. You know. Then I, re I recall this old couple. You know. The husband always called his wife. They're already about on their eighties. And then the husband says, you know, he called his wife sweetheart. And uh, one of the grandsons says, you know, my grandfather, really, they're very sweet. My granddad always called my grandmother sweetheart. So the grandson asked his grandfather, why do you always ask grandma, uh, why do you always call her sweetheart? The grandfather says, be quiet. We've been married for so long, I forgot his, her name. So, <laughs> so, so don't forget the name of your wife. <laughs> well, this <is> sweetheart. <laughs> well, um, I'm here because of the invitation of the new newlywed, and we were here yesterday, and praise God. Amen. And uh, oh, everybody's giving their advice to the couple. And I said, wow, talaga, talaga naman ang daming sinasabi. Ewan ko lang kung matatandaan ng mga ito. <laughs> I don't know if they would remember. Uh, you know. But uh, there is only one thing you would always remember. If the wife wants to be treated as queen in their house, then treat your husband as the king. Amen. So we praise the Lord for that. John chapter 15, just a few verses, and then we will jump to the first king a while ago that our dear brother read. And uh, in verse number 4 in John ch chapter 15, he said, Abide in me, and I in you. As the bronze cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man able not in me, abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them, cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, and ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. 
Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Father, we humbly bow ourselves before thy throne of grace, recognizing, O oh God, that without you we can do nothing. But we believe, Lord, as we gather here this morning that you are in our midst. May we ask, O oh God, for the power of the Holy Spirit that be upon us, O oh God, O oh Father. Help us, O oh God, to learn more from your word. Refresh our hearts. Revive each and every one of us, O oh Father. And we be recharged in God's service. Bless thy people, O Father, use thy servant, for I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. We will not um, be studying more of John chapter 15. I'm just going to get some of the verses here, and then we'll jump to uh, 1 Kings chapter 2. You know, in the word abide, um, here in chapter 15, there's three implications that we need to see in our lives. In verse number 10, he said, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. You see here the compliance. We have to comply. He said, If you abide, if ye keep my commandments, keeping my commandments, knowing the word of God, knowing the commandment of God, you keep them. So, and he said, Ab And ye shall abide in my love. You have to comply, the compliance. In verse number, verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, and ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. What a great blessing right here, amen? You see right there, the comfortability. God give you that comfort, that if you abide in the Lord, that whatsoever ye shall ask in His will, He'll do it. What a great assurance knowing that whatever we ask in God's perfect will, He'll say, I'll do it. Amen? Amen? You know, many times when we pray, Lord, bless me. Bless you with what? Right? Ask something. It's specific. Amen? Amen? Bless me with a wife. What kind of a wife you want? <laughs> Amen? Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, oh, ito sana ang babae ito. No, you would see this person, this man or this woman, and you pray for that person, and whatever obstacle that may, you will see, but because you have prayed and it is God's will, nothing can hinder it. Comfortability. Verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. You see right there the continuity. Amen? Amen. Manatili kang nakadindyan. Abide in me. Amen? You can never bear fruit except ye abide. Amen? Yeah. So you see right there, three implications, compliance, comfortability, and continuity. Now let's go to First Kings. And there you read the story, the name Shimei. He said right there, as we read a while, and the king sent and called for Shimei. Who is this Shimei? Now, if you will read in Second Samuel, let's go there, so we would be able to understand. And know who is she made. <clears throat> Second Samuel chapter sixteen. Sixteen. Verse five. The Bible says right here, and when King David came to Bahorim, behold. Thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Jera. He came forth and what? 
and curse as he came. She may curse King David. And thus said in verse 7, when he cursed, came out, come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. This is what she may did to King David. He cursed him. In verse number 11, let's go there. And David said to Abisha and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth to the bowel, seeketh my life. How much more now uh, may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord had bidden him. What happened was, because of David's rebellion, and it seems like David is doing nothing, so she may curse him. Verse 13, And as David and his men went by the way, she may went alone. Sinundan pa eh. Sino ma'am? David is still going with them. And as he walked beside David or going alone, he keeps on cursing David. Curse as he went and throw stone at him and cast dust. Look at what this man's doing. To God's anointed. The king. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. So now you know what this man did. David remembered that. And then let's go to verse number 1 of 1 Kings chapter 2. Now, when the days... Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. He charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore show thyself a man. Keep the church of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, whatsoever thou turnest thyself. That the Lord may continue his words which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all thy heart, with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, thou knowest also what Joab. Now, you see, now, we're trying to remember. That what people have done. Moreover, thou knowest also what Joab, the son of Zeruiah, did to me, what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel, Abner, the son of Ner, Amasa, the son of Jether, whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace, put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins, and his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to thy wisdom. Let not his whore head go down to the grave in peace. But show kindness unto the son of Barzillai of Gileadite. And let them be on the, of those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom thy brother. And behold, thou hast with thee Shimei the son of Gera, a Benjamite of Bahurim, which cursed me. He remembers. Huh? This man cursed me with grievous curse in the day when I went to uh, Mana, uh, Mahanaim, but he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put thee to death, with the sword. You will read that in 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 16 to 23, when she may approach David and ask for forgiveness. He asked for forgiveness. No. He knows, she may know that what he did will face a penalty of death because he cursed. One of the uh, men of David, he said, Why don't you just put that man to die? 
Make him pay for what he did. He cursed you. But David said, just relax. No. It's okay. The Lord will deal with him. He asked for forgiveness. I've forgiven him. And he knows, she may know, he's afraid. He knows he's going to die. David said, I'll promise. You'll not die. But then, here comes now the time. When David is going to die. So will be the next king, King Solomon. What if King Solomon forget or wouldn't remember or just ignore what David has said and he's going to call for Shimei and put him to death pay what he's done cursing the man of God he's not in Jerusalem at this time Shimei is not there because he is afraid he knows the consequence of his action. He's going to die. He knows one day the new king will send soldiers to fetch him. And now he was there in his house, in his place. He hears the footsteps of soldiers approaching his place for the king had sent for Shimei he was there maybe watching the door and as the soldier knocked on the door he opens it and the soldier says Shimei the king sent for you oh he is not refusing anything he is not fighting the soldiers I'll go with you so she may went with them. That as they're approaching the city of Jerusalem, going inside the palace, you would hear the palpitation of Shimei's heart. You see here the sound. Book, book. He is afraid of what he did. And he's not only afraid, well, it is, it, maybe his wife and children will be punished also. Because his sin is so grievous that he cursed the king. Huh? And it's probably the, the person there, and he bound and uh, called for the king. King Solomon, Shimei is approaching. Solomon on his throne. Watching she may entering. I don't know what would be his situation. Maybe he said he's down, shoulders, walking slow. He is afraid. And then the king. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Build thee a house in Jerusalem. Mm. Wow. I thought he would hear this word from the king. You'll go to dungeon and five days you will be hung. I know. She may. You are in Jerusalem now. You are no longer in that place. And look at this. He said, build thee a house. Wow. What do you hear? What do you see there? He cursed the king, King David. He even throws, throws stone and dust to the king. And people have seen what he did to the king, King David. And now here is his son Solomon. But David talked to his son Solomon. And compassionately, Solomon says, I want you to build a house in Jerusalem. First thing you see right there is that Shimei was pardoned. Amen. Amen. You cannot build a house there if you are not pardoned. Yes. But Shimei was receiving pardon from the king. 
And while probably that, that heart that is so nervous, he, he says, I'm going to die, but now, wow, I'm going to build a house in Jerusalem. I was pardoned by the king. Amen. Not only you see that he was pardoned, build the house, which means he was given a property. Amen. You cannot build a house into your neighbor's property. Right? The king has given him a place. Hey, you can build a house there. Bring your relatives, bring your kindred, bring your family. Take them to Jerusalem. Build the house in Jerusalem. Not only that he was pardoned, but in Jerusalem, the king provided for him. He received provision in Jerusalem. Amen? In Jerusalem. Remember, he's outside. He's not in Jerusalem. But he, the king sent for him. He was pardoned. Now was given a place to stay. That's provision. Amen? What a great blessing. Not only that, if you would uh, look then, build the, a house in Jerusalem, dwell there, go not forth, thence any whither, don't go anywhere. Uh, uh, the king says, what do you see there? He is no longer afraid that one day somebody will come in his house when he was not yet in Jerusalem and he will be Hang. He's no longer afraid because he's pardoned and he gets a place to build the house. He was provided by the king. And now what will happen? Knowing that you're pardoned and God has given and, and the king has given you that place, provision, now you will be what? At peace. There's peace while he's in Jerusalem. Amen. Peace. In Jerusalem now, there is no peace. There is safety. They're safe. They have this uh, dome, uh, doom that, uh, dome that they call it, that 50 miles away or 15 miles when the enemy will shoot a, a missile to the country that this uh, gadget will make sure that those missiles will explode, explode in the air. There's safety now, but there is no peace. That's why we pray for peace in Jerusalem. And here in Shimei's life, wow, pardon, now I have a place, so I am at peace. I am at peace. Not only that I have peace, I am in Jerusalem. I have the king's protection. Amen. Stay here in Jerusalem. But look at the verse. So you see, he was a place, Jerusalem is a place of pardon, a place of provision, and a place of peace for Shimei, and a place of protection. That is in verse number 37. That's why the king says, stay in Jerusalem. Stay in Jerusalem. Why do you have to stay in Jerusalem? Why? Because there is pardon there. You've been provided there. There is peace right there. There is protection you have there. For it shall be on the day that thou goest out, passes over Brook Kidron, verse 37, thou shalt know for certain that thou shalt surely die. Thy blood shall be upon thine own head. In verse 38, And she may said unto the king, The saying is good, as my lord the king has said, so will thy servant do. She may dwell in Jerusalem many days. Wow, what a blessing. Amen. Stay in Jerusalem. But then the Bible says, And it came to pass. At the end of three years, 
Two of the servants of Shimei ran away into Achis, son of Maka, king of Gath. And they told Shimei, saying, Behold thy servants be in Gath. I don't know, maybe the servant have taken something. Maybe his cell phone. Nokia 3310. I don't know. Maybe the servant took something from Shimei's house that Shimei needs to go and find them. So he was able to find them, but he crossed the border. Somebody saw him and reported to the king. He knows he is not supposed to cross the border because the king said, don't cross the border. And he agreed. Your word, O king, is good enough. Thy servant will follow. I'll follow. But he crossed the border. And he knows the consequence again of his action. What is it so important that he needs to cross the border to follow the servants? I don't care, maybe if myself, I don't care what they have stolen, but I am afraid to cross the border because of the king's warning. Don't cross the border. Or you will have a big problem. You will die, she may. But he crossed the border. And he, of course, you hear their story. He paid the penalty. Imagine he was given a second chance. He was pardoned. Provided a place for him. Enjoying everything. Why don't he need to cross the border? He got the king's protection and he got peace right there. Nobody will bother him. But he crossed the border anyway. Hello, my dearly beloved in the Lord. We've learned something, the message this morning. See, she stayed in Jerusalem. We have our Jerusalem. Amen. This is our Jerusalem. The Bible says in the book of Acts that God purchased the church with his own blood. Amen. Sabi ng iglesia, tignan mo, si Cristo hindi Diyos kasi may katawang, ano May, duk, may, eh, may laman, may, may balat, may, may buto. So he is not God because Jesus Christ is flesh. But the Bible says the church purchased with the blood of God. It did not say Jesus Christ, but God. Is God the Spirit? Yes. Why does he got the blood? If God is the Spirit. Amen. So now we explain that God manifested in the flesh the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 He gave his life. He shed his blood for the church. And the Bible says in the book of Acts, when people get repented and received Christ as their Lord and Savior, what happened? They were added. You did not join. You were added. Amen? You were added to the church. But praise God. By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we were cleansed. Amen. Amen. We received that pardon in the church. It's not by organization. It's not by association. Somebody preach. Why? Because there is a local church there who commissioned his member to go and preach. Amen. 
There are churches in the Philippines, here in Cambodia, all over the world, that fulfilling the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ, go and preach. It's the program, not by organization, not by mission board, but it's a program by a local New Testament church. Amen. We receive that pardon. Amen. Thank God. As Pastor Joel mentioned a while ago, many years ago, they are in Phnom Penh serving there. And came a time when they have to be in this place. Brother Roman will be in Batam. Batam bang ba yun? Oh. Turn out, this is more... Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But thank God, amen. Many years ago, no gospel witness. Now we have an independent Baptist church here in Shimbri. Amen. We're given a second chance. Some of you from another place, now you've learned the truth here. Amen. Some of you are flying somewhere listening to false doctrine. Now you have the true doctrine, amen? True word of God. Learning God's word in the church. Don't cross the border. And I'll tell you this. You will never grow outside from the church. Oh, I can do it alone. No way. There is no way in the scripture that you will grow alone by yourself. Away, here in the church the body of Christ the Bible says what fitly joined together compacted amen don't say that I, oh, I am not the eye so I'm okay oh there's an eye there's an ear there's a hand amen and all together we work in our Jerusalem this is our Jerusalem you know, in the church, we experience God's pardon. Amen? I would like to tell you this also. Here, God provides. Blessing goes through the church. Amen? You will experience a blessing. Maybe you would say individual blessing. But don't forget, there is a church that prayed for you. Amen. There is a church that begged God to open the windows of heaven and so that you receive the blessing from the Lord. There is a church that prayed for you. There is a man of God that prayed for you. There is his family that prayed for you. There are men and women in the church that prayed for you so that God will open the windows of heaven and shower you the great blessing that you have now. Because there is the church. Amen. You will not have this blessing if you are not in the church. Amen. God's provision is always go through His church. Not, I'll be here alone. I grow by myself. Oh no. It is very impossible. It's very hard to cut yourself into the body, <laughs> remove yourself to the body of Christ. Or else, you're dead. Yeah. Right? If this right hand is removed, not part of the body, dead. Now you're connected. Amen? This is your Jerusalem. Don't cross the border. Yeah. In the church, you have peace. You have a place. You know, when you get out, when you face the world, the enemy, the devil, will try to put many storms in your life. Tama? Bibigyan ka ng napakatinding bagyo sa iyong buhay. You will face all kinds of trouble, left and right. 
Everywhere you face, you will face trouble. But then by God's grace, you will have peace because God said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Kahit sa Bible, may inchik kayo, hindi natin mawala. Mr. Law. And law, I am with you always. Kaya sa Pilipinas, alam ni Duterte yan. Kaya hindi niya mapaalis sa mga Mr. Law. No? What a promise given by Christ. Amen? So you will have peace. Yes, in this world you shall have tribulation. John 16, 33. But be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Just have peace in your mind and in your heart. Why? Because I have overcome the world. The Christ that we have in our heart is a victorious Savior. And He will not make you a failure you will not fail but if you cross the border that's a different story but if you stay in Jerusalem you stay in Jerusalem you will have peace amen you'll have peace here you have the word of God being preached here you'll have peace And only that you will have peace in Jerusalem. God's protection is here. Amen. You know, one day, the mother, you know, they are living beside, there's a swamp area in Florida. And one morning, the sun just died on the dive on the water while the mother is cleaning the dishes in the kitchen. While he, her son swimming in that swamp area, the mother saw a big crocodile swimming towards the sun. As the mother saw it, she runs she went out and been shouting, Son, 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 there is a crocodile. And then he heard her mother, his mother, and as he saw that crocodile, he swam back and swim as fast as he can. But it's very hard to outrun a crocodile. The mother hurried up and ran. She was there on the dock. And as soon as the son raised his hand, the mother grabbed it. But it's also the time the crocodile had beaten the leg of the sun. There's a tug of war between the mother and the crocodile. And the mother is shouting for help. And there is a guy driving his pickup truck passing through that lake. And he saw that this mother told the situation stopped the car, his pickup truck, got his shotgun, ran towards there, and that guy shot the crocodile, and the guy carried the boy. All oh, he ran to the pickup truck, put the boy right there, and the mother, they went to the hospital. That day, news broke out. There is a young boy beaten by a crocodile. After six weeks, they're going to release the boy from the hospital. And there's an anchor lady from a news station came and he asked the boy for the last time, can I see the mark in your leg? You know, the mark, the crocodile within his leg. Took a picture, the video also, to show it in the news. But he said, wait. I'll show you something. This is leaves. Pull up his leaves. You see the mark? You see the mark? 
That's the mark of my mother's fingernails. So there, stuck on that flesh because my mother doesn't want me to be eaten by that crocodile. She saved me. I, the world is trying to pull you out from Jerusalem. But you have the man of God that pulling you out from the mouth of the world. He got that mark. Amen. Paul says, you question me. I have the mark. I have the mark. I've been stoned. I've been punched. Everything. I have the mark. I want to preach the truth. The man of God here have the mark. So that you will not cross the border. Amen. His protection. You've been pardoned. You've been provided. You have peace. There is protection. Why cross the border? Then how are you going to stay in Jerusalem? How? Number one. Number one. Consider the benefactor. Consider those people who have helped you. Amen. Amen. That's what David. David did. He said, he, he said to Solomon, please don't, don't put Shimei to, to death. Don't hang him. I made a promise. Solomon does what he did. But she may cross the border. He disobeyed. Consider the teaching, everything that your pastor have taught you. Amen. That we have learned from the word of God. We don't preach magazine. We don't preach what people say. What we preach is what the Bible says. Thus saith the Lord. We don't entertain. Amen. If we entertain, I'll do magic here. Hindi tayo yung mga mga ngaral doon sa Kirino Grandstand na nagmamagic. Amen. They do all of that. Consider not only the benefactor, consider the boundary. You cross the border. You cross the boundary. Look. Hey, this is my line. I am here in God's way, God's will. I am here in God's protection and peace. Do I have to cross the border? Consider the border. Because when you cross, step outside from God's will, you'll pay a heavy penalty. And we have seen it. Amen. A lot of young people, a lot of father, a lot of mother have crossed the border and pay a heavy penalty. Consider the benefactor. Consider the boundary. Consider the blessing. I, when I cross the border, there's no blessing there. But I stay in Jerusalem. I have the blessing here. So why do I have to cross the border? Amen? Bakit ko pa susuwela sinabi ng salita ng Diyos? I will entertain unbeliever as my suitor. Hindi ba ni pastor, maliligtas man yan. It's okay, pastor, he will be saved. Oh, no, 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 you are gambling. I have seen a lot of situations like that. I have a ministry in counseling there before I came over to Thailand. 
Oh, very sweet, everything. Oh, I said, it is not God's will. Oh, he is very kind. Oh, she's okay. After six months, they came back and want to file an annulment. Because the, the guy is not saved. But he's handsome. Handsome. Ah. Yeah. So the, that, don't cross the border. Stay on God's perfect will. Stay in Jerusalem. Amen. And last, hallelujah. <laughs> Consider the burden. Uh, you get out there. You will have so much burden. Because you are in rebellion to God. Yes. You see those people who are no longer in Jerusalem? Do you think there is joy in their heart? Mm -hmm. You ask them to come back. Oh, it's okay. I'm okay. But they're not okay. Because they are not in God's will. This is your Jerusalem. Stay in Jerusalem. Don't cross the border. Or you will pay a heavy penalty. Not for long the trumpet will sound. Life is short. Why do you have to waste it? Some people say, yeah, I'm not enjoying that. You know, when I surrendered my life, I was 16 years old. Now, I am... I am 29. No. You're crossing the border. Crossing the border. <laughs> I crossed the border. <laughs> but you know what? I never regret that I say, Lord, here is my life. Amen. Because no one will say, I regret that I serve God. But those who live the boundary lives a regret, regretful life. Now, I will stop. You say, when you get old, if you ever will get old, would it be good? Oh, oh, well, what would be a good thing to say? In Tagalog, we say, sayang sana naglingkod na ako. O, buti na lang naglingkod ako. Ano mas magandang sabihin? Sayang o buti na lang? Yeah. So when you translate it in English? <laughs> They'll say, I wasted it. I wish I have served God. Will you say, I wish I have served God? Or, thank God I have served Him till the day the trumpet of God will sound. God bless you and thank you for giving me this opportunity.